Welcome back, Alpha Hunters. The markets are closed for the week of July the 5th. It was kind of a weird partial week, kind of just broken up there a little bit with the holiday during the middle of the week. But let's go ahead and talk about what what, what did go down this week. And uh, it wasn't really the market. Uh, we did have a nice little gap up there on Monday. It did roll over the, for the first 45 minutes or so, first hour and a half. And then that was about it. We had a nice little bounce going into midday on Monday, kind of just sideways then to rest out, you know, wrap up the rest of that day. Tuesday, a little bit of a gap down, but then that was it. It was game busters after that. Just kind of market just kind of took off the entire day on Tuesday. The queues, I believe, were up a little bit over 1% on Tuesday. So there you go. Wednesday was a half day of trading before the holiday on, thir on Thursday. And a little bit of a gap down there, not a big deal, but yeah, I mean, just kind of traded higher there for the first, you know, half the day. And then Friday, very subtle gap up, but just continue to trade higher as well throughout the day. And really, it was all tech. Like, it, there wasn't really much to even talk about in, in other areas of the market. It was pretty much tech. So last week, uh, I had a question in the comments, and one thing that we did look at uh, during the week on the live stream and, you know, midday recaps, uh, was seasonality. And it's a good question because I did change the thumbnail and I'm leaving it the same, uh, as a cell. And that's not really unnecessarily like an omen of, okay, go bearish. That's not really what is meant by the sale. Really, it's just a great time to maybe be dialing it back here. Uh, we haven't really seen participation from a lot of the other stocks you know we'll take a look at the rsp and iwm obviously later but in talking seasonality basically where we are right now is about right here at this time period right here at the beginning of july and in a normal year we are only up roughly about six and a half seven percent ish on the year uh, at at this point year to date at this point in time currently on the market we are up at like 15 and a half 16 percent on the year and yeah, I mean, we, we are up there. We're, we're pretty much up there, man. Uh, so we are definitely outpacing a whole year of gains and we're only like halfway through the year. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, it might be due for a little bit of pullback. A lot of the names that have been running lately are the ones that everything, everybody, everybody's mostly piled into and they could be due for a little bit of a breather. So that was, that was kind of one of the reasons why I, I, I kind of made that switch last week on the spy outlook and, and made it a sell and we were seeing some selling kind of at that zone over the past couple of weeks uh, obviously we broke through that this past week but it is what it is i mean the market kind of does its own thing on its own schedule i'm not you know i'm not trying to call tops here and there was some options activity if you want to go into that kind of stuff on friday uh basically saying that there was a lot of put buying on Friday for like the IWM, the Qs, and the SPY. So we'll see if that amounts to anything. I mean, people buying puts all the time. It doesn't mean really anything, but there was a lot of put buying. So we'll see if something comes to that next week. One of the things that I, I wasn't really aware of until I saw it Sunday night, I saw uh, someone tweet out something that typically the July 4th week is the most bullish, statistically the most bullish week of the year. On the SP 500. So I wish I would have saw that before, <laughs> you know, before I put out my video last week, but I saw that Sunday night and I was like, yeah, okay, well, that, well, that stinks, but all right, we'll see what happens. And sure enough, it was. All right, and take a look at sector performance throughout this short trading week or shorter trading week. We have discretionaries doing pretty well. Uh, if you don't really keep track of the market every day, take a look at TSLA, Tesla. Uh, broke through some major kind of downtrending resistances and just took off. They also had vehicle deliveries for Q2 come out, uh, reported that come out. So just kind of took off there and continued pretty strongly throughout the week. Tech also outperforming on the week and communication. So those are the three big tech sectors, discretionaries, tech, communications outperforming on the week and really on friday it was a whole lot of meta and alphabet as well but meta i mean really kind of took off there on friday staples underperforming financials underperforming utilities underperforming real estate materials industrials under underperforming and then healthcare and energies at the lower end 
of the week. All right, take a look at the VIX. You can see a nice little gap up on Friday. I would expect to have a gap up on Monday because we typically do gap up on Monday. Uh, nice little lower wick there on the VIX. We'll see what happens. Is that an amounts to anything? Is that a reversal or anything like that? We'll find out earlier this next week, I'm sure. Dollar has dropped off seven days now. Like, I'm just dropping. So that rally that we had pretty much throughout June is we have pulled back substantial part of that now already. And so we will uh, we'll see what happens as we go into next week. There was some good amount of jobs data that we did get this week. Tuesday we got Jolts and Jolts job openings actually did come in, you know, a little bit of higher. 8.14 million compared to forecasts of 7.91 million, which was also where prior mo uh, prior month was also. And then we got to Wednesday and we got initial jobless claims came in at 238k. Forecast is calling for 235k, also a little bit higher than prior month as well. Also a little bit higher than prior week as well. And then we got Friday, usually a, a pretty good one. We got the unemployment rate, which came in at 4.1%. Forecast and prior were both at 4%. The interesting thing about it was we did actually have a little bit of an uptick on the participation rate. So the participation rate went up 62.6% from the prior of 62.5%. So a little bit higher there. Non-farm payrolls, the private one. This is, a, this is probably the more interesting one because non-farm payrolls actually came in at 206 k Forecast was calling for 190 with prior at 218k. The non-farm payrolls private came in at 136k. So private businesses, if you exclude the government stuff, actually dropped off pretty solidly. So yeah, interesting on that one. Kind of a mixed bag out there. I mean, we got Jolt's data that was a little bit higher, but we also have well, we can see the unemployment rates ticking higher. We also have non far payrolls on for the business side, not doing well. And the initial jobless claims also continues to tick higher as well. So we'll, we'll see if that, I mean, jobs data ha over the past couple of months has, has steadily started to get worse and worse, but we're not having that huge accelerated moment uh, that typically you, you will see. And once we get to that kind of a moment, then like the cat will be out of the bag. I think we'll probably start to see people really pay attention to the economy at that point in time and probably be a lot more protective of capital especially in uh, a lot of the names that have been running kind of hot and take a look at the gld the gold trust obviously dollar dropping off recently you know especially that wednesday and friday and that's where you see gold pop pretty good there uh so this could have definitely been that consolidation we've been talking about and moving higher so it looks pretty good to me and you had to like this one day abandoned baby that we did have last week as well. So looking pretty good there on gold. Even if it does come back down, I think you're still going to be bullish on it. Taking a look at yields. Yields dropped off pretty much throughout the whole week. The one interesting thing will be, is this an inverted head and shoulders on yields possible? We'll see what happens this next week. Uh, I mean, it, it is back down to the same level we kind of based before we had a quick quick pop off of it and came back down yeah i mean it's interesting because this little run that we did have towards the end of june uh and even uh july 1st we did take out that high from the beginning of june it could be an inverted head and shoulders or it's gonna be one heck of a you know freak out as it came and took that took that top and then comes all the way back down so yeah it's uh it'll be an interesting one to see what happens there on yields this next week two years kind of just dropping off take a look at that real quick Two year was not really getting much of that bounce there towards the end of June and then it just dropped off this week. So um, it makes sense, especially with what we were seeing towards the end of June, right? We were seeing this inversion yield, the 10 2 inversion, really, really kind of jump up. Kind of looks like it's consolidating here, waiting for the moving averages to come up and support it and push it back higher. So what will be interesting to see what do we see? Long terms push higher or maybe short terms drop off even more? That is going to be a great question. And how would that impact bonds? Well, bonds actually did do very well this week, especially with yields dropping off as much as they did. Uh, even I'm kind of surprised how, how much, you know, bonds did do well. So bonds are getting kind of an interesting spot because we had a very clear breakdown last week. We're having a very clear bounce back this week. Which way are they going to go? 
All I can say is pick away and just make sure you have your stop losses in. All right, and take a look here at Spy G, Spy V, and real quick, I want to hit this before we run through the five major ETFs. But you, I mean, you got a clear, clear running here of into the growth areas, which I mean, it's basically it's AI dominated. I mean, look at the run that has been going on here from basically mid May to I mean, what we just had, you know finishing out this past week. I mean, just getting back up towards the highs that we had late in 21. And, but it's just the the rate of climb that we've just had here over the past two months. Not even, I mean, pretty much about two months. Yeah, pretty much about two months. So it has been pretty rapid. And that is another reason why I kind of want to, I kind of was saying, you know, a, a sell, you know, and I'm not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it as is for now, you know. We, we might see that come back down over the next week or two. We'll, we'll see. It's not typically, you know, talking about season now, not typically a bearish time of the year, but it's also, we're also really extended for where we normally are throughout the year. So it'll be interesting to see kind of what, what happens because, I mean, everybody's piling into the same stuff and we're not really seeing much participation outside of AI names and maybe like one big stock in a few of the sectors not technology and so taking a look at the rsp here over the past couple of months i mean this thing just hasn't done a whole lot really at all and one of the things that you kind of look at today is we got this obvious range right we got this obvious range and you would have thought early part of this week we would have been running back up to the top end of the range see what happens there but we rejected and in monday we we traded back down and now you have a little bit of this like pushing down here. We got a little bit of a low, we got a lower wick there on Friday. So we'll see what happens as we go into Monday, Tuesday. But yeah, if we break this down, you're probably going to get quite a pe quite a bit of people to start switching here on the RSP. You might get an influx of, you know, people that try to buy the breakdowns, you know, those big hedge funds that need a lot of the liquidity. Yeah. And, you know, maybe maybe that would hold it i it's it's so tough it's just the the rsp is just not looking good and neither is the iwm we'll talk about that one here in a sec dia actually does look pretty good um aapl and microsoft both help, helping this thing out quite a bit this thing looks pretty good uh, i definitely like the lower wick that I even threw in on friday this looks pretty solid i could see the dia going higher and then also talking about the iwm this also looks kind of like it wants to break down a little bit maybe it doesn't got a nice little lower wick there on friday but one of the things that we were kind of talking about on friday you could play the rsp bearish you could play the dia bullish you could play the idmbm bearish and then whichever way like the group goes you close out the opposite side right so if we want to pop in bullish you close out the rsp or the iwm and if you pop bearish you close out the dia something like that so just an idea the dia does look pretty good the rsp does look pretty bad to me the iwm just kind of here in no man's land like it has been for a while and you see that the queues i mean the queues just continue to get extended I, I mean this thing's been an absolute monster and then you just had three days like that straight up so it's not it's not like we're buying off the bottoms here but hey it is what it is spy kind of the same thing not as as aggressive right queues will have a little bit more of that top end tech concentration but spy also getting into that extension into the all-time high area so we'll see what happens this next week uh, and this is kind of just what i was going back to of why I, I made uh the thumbnail change uh, last week because we had a sell down back towards the late june uh two of them right and last week we had this little uh kind of wick sell down intraday reversal that was a crazy one uh last friday quite a bit of volume too but so i'm kind of surprised to see this just easily go right through it but i'm also not because well it is july 4th week very much a strong bullish week historically so alpha hunters that's about all i got we'll see what happens this next week we'll see if all those put buyers wind up coming up with anything and, and one of the other things that you know when you're talking about spy look maybe a sell uh, you know you could also just be selling cover calls and that was kind of you know some of the other things we were kind of talking about just you know limiting your upside risk 
right? Limiting the upside. You know, start to look to seriously lock in some profits. It doesn't have to be a sell. It could just be selling cover calls. So, Alpha Hunters, have a great weekend. Take care.